We are now going to look at financial market or investor ratios, and these ratios are used by investors to assess the performance of the entity from an investment point of view. Now, at this point, guys, you already know that all ratios should be calculated using market values and not book values. You also know how to treat excess cash, and you know how to calculate total interest-bearing debt. You also know, depending on the marks available, in addition to all of the ratio calculations below, you can also calculate various movements. Now, I want you to jump to lecture example five, and we are going to work through this lecture example, applying everything that you've been provided with in the lecture notes. So in this example, you've been told the following information relates to Keen Limited. So you've been given information for 20x4 and for 20x3. We have earnings per share in cents, dividends per share in cents, and the market price per share in cents. You've also been given the following industry averages, the price earnings multiple, the movement in the share price, the dividend yield, and also the dividend cover. Then in the required, you need to analyze and interpret the financial market or investor ratios relating to Keen Limited. So guys, if you need to analyze the financial market or investor ratios, that is where you are going to calculate the ratios. And interpret them is obviously when you comment on the ratios that you've calculated. So let's go back to the information provided in the lecture notes. The first ratio that you need to be able to calculate is the price earnings multiple. And we perform this calculation by taking the market price of equity, or in other words, the share price, and dividing by headline earnings. So you can see the ratio calculation actually comes directly from the heading. We take the share price and we divide by headline earnings. That's how you calculate the price earnings multiple. What does this ratio tell us? It indicates the amount that investors are willing to pay for shares per rand of reported profits. So that's the interpretation. And you can see that actually from the calculation. We are looking at what investors are willing to pay. So the share price is what investors are willing to pay for shares in the company relative to the headline earnings. So the amount investors are willing to pay for shares per rand of reported profits or per rand of earnings. Now guys, you want this multiple to be as high as possible because a high multiple means that investors are willing to pay more per rand of reported earnings. So the higher this multiple is, the better. And a high multiple indicates a low risk investment and high future growth perceived by investors. Now guys, as an alternative, instead of calculating the price earnings multiple, you can calculate the earnings yield. And the earnings yield is just the inverse of the price earnings multiple. So to calculate the price earnings multiple, we take the market value of equity and we divide by headline earnings. However, when calculating the earnings yield, we take headline earnings and we divide by the market value of equity. Now please note, to avoid confusion, I recommend that you rather work with the price earnings multiple and not the earnings yield. So guys, if for some reason you are given the earnings yield, convert the earnings yield into a price earnings multiple and rather work with the price earnings multiple. So let's say for example, guys, you've been given an earnings yield of 8%. So an earnings yield of 8%, if we want to convert that into a price earnings multiple, it's just the inverse, so you say 1 divided by 8%, which is going to give you a price earnings multiple of 12.5. So to avoid confusion, if you are given an earnings yield instead of a price earnings multiple, 
rather convert it into a price earnings multiple and work with the price earnings multiple. All right, so let's perform this calculation for our example. In order to calculate the price earnings multiple, we take the market value of equity or the share price and we divide by earnings. So you can perform the calculation for 20x4 and for 20x3 and calculate the multiple in each of those years. Please note, guys, this multiple over here is just a number. So this doesn't give you an answer as a percentage. It gives you an answer as a number. Let's just add that to the lecture notes. A multiple is a number. Then in addition to calculating the price earnings multiple for 20x4 and for 20x3, we can also calculate the movement in the multiple. And remember, you calculate a movement by taking the current year amount, subtracting the prior year, and dividing by the prior year. So you can see the price earnings multiple has decreased by 14.04% from the prior year. Then let's look at the discussion. So as per the framework that I provided you with, first we are going to interpret this ratio. So guys, for 20x4, we calculated a multiple of 13.22. So that means investors are willing to pay 13.22 times more than the most recent earnings when purchasing shares in Keen Limited. So we are comparing the most recent earnings to the share price, and we can see investors are prepared to pay 13.22 times more than the current earnings that the company made. Now guys, we can also benchmark this to an industry average. If you go back to the information provided in the question, we were given the industry average. So you can see Keen Limited has a higher price earnings multiple in both years. So Keen Limited has performed better than the industry average with a higher multiple in both years. Remember, a higher multiple means that shareholders or investors are prepared to pay more per one rand of reported earnings or one rand of reported profits. So you want the multiple to be as high as possible. So what does a very high multiple indicate? It means that investors perceive Keen Limited to have higher potential growth and or lower investment risk. We can also benchmark to the prior year because we performed the calculation for both the current year and the prior year, and we also calculated the movement. We can see that the PE multiple decreased from the prior year to the current year. So if it decreases, it means it's deteriorated. So the multiple has deteriorated in the current year. And if you also compare that to the industry average, the industry average multiple actually increased or improved slightly from the prior year to the current year. So although Keen Limited is better than the industry in both years, their multiple is deteriorating where the industry average is actually improving. So the industry average has improved slightly, whereas Keen Limited's multiple has deteriorated. All right, let's go back to the lecture notes. The next ratio that we need to look at is the market value of invested capital over EBITDA multiple. And once again, guys, the formula comes directly from the name of this ratio. We take the market value of invested capital and we divide by EBITDA. And once again, guys, this is a multiple, so it gives you an answer as a number. How do you calculate the market value of invested capital? You take total shareholders' equity, or in other words, the market value of equity. Remember, you should use market values if possible and not book values. Plus the market value of interest-bearing debt, plus the market value of preference share capital, minus any non-operating assets. And remember, non-operating assets includes 
excess cash. Now we can't perform this calculation in our example because we don't have enough information. We've got the market value of equity because we have the share price. However, we don't have interest-bearing debt, we don't have preference share capital, we don't have non-operating assets, we also don't have earnings before interest tax depreciation and amortization. So there's not enough information available in our lecture example to perform this calculation. Then we already discussed the next ratio when looking at return on invested capital ratios. So I'm not going to discuss this again. Please refer back to return on invested capital ratios. For the discussion. However, please note return on invested capital can either be calculated in the category return on invested capital ratios or it also forms part of the category financial market or investor ratios. Now please note guys, once again, we can't perform this calculation for our example because we don't have enough information available. Then the next ratio is EVA or economic value added. And this ratio focuses on the creation of shareholder wealth over time. And you calculate EVA by taking the adjusted no plat and no plat is a net operating profit less adjusted taxes. So in other words, guys, you just take operating profit and you deduct tax at 28%. So you don't use the tax expense as per the statement of comprehensive income. You just take operating profit minus 28% to get your net operating profit less adjusted taxes. Now please note guys, this should be your adjusted no plat. So this figure is actually adjusted for distortions introduced by accounting standards. However, we don't look at that in detail in this lecture. This is covered in more detail in the performance management lecture. Then, when calculating EVA, we start with the adjusted no plat and we deduct the adjusted capital employed multiplied by the company's WAC. So, what is capital employed? Capital employed is shareholders' funds, or if possible, the market value of equity, plus interest bearing debt, and if possible, that should also be the market value of interest bearing debt. Now guys, once again, we can't perform this calculation in our example because there's insufficient information available. Then the next calculation is the change or the movement in the share price. And you always calculate a change or a movement in the same way. You take the current year share price, you deduct the prior year share price, and you divide by the prior year share price. And please note guys, here's your interpretation. which will help you with your discussion. An entity's share price changes as a result of supply and demand. Please note, guys, the share price doesn't always reflect the true value of the company. It's not always the value of the company's underlying assets and liabilities. It is determined based on supply and demand, and that will be affected by the market's perception of the entity's future growth prospects. So if investors perceive that the company is going to grow in the future, then they'll want to buy shares in that company. So in other words, there will be a demand for the shares in the company. And because there's a demand, that will cause the share price to increase. However, if the company doesn't have good future growth prospects, then nobody will want to buy shares in that company. So there'll be an oversupply, and that will cause the share price to drop. All right, let's look at this calculation for our example. You have got the share price over here. Here's your market price per share. So to calculate the movement, you take the current year, you deduct the prior year, and you divide by the prior year. Calculate the movements in the share price. 
Okay, so we can see the share price has increased by 26.67%. So if we look at our discussion, let's first interpret the calculation. And this comes directly from your lecture notes. Movements in the share price are driven by supply and demand, which is affected by the market's perception of Keen Limited's future growth prospects. So that comes directly from the lecture notes. We can then benchmark to the prior year because we did calculate that the share price increased from the prior year to the current year. So obviously if the share price is increasing, that is an improvement from the prior year to the current year. So the share price has improved from the prior year. We can also benchmark to the industry average because we were given the movement in the share price, which was 12%. So Keen Limited's share price is growing at a faster rate than the industry average, indicating positive performance. And the reason for this is, link it back to the interpretation, guys, this means obviously that the market believes that Keen Limited will experience higher growth than the industry average. Because remember, the movement in the share price is driven by supply and demand, which is affected by the market's perception of their future growth prospects. So the market obviously believes that Keen Limited has better future growth prospects than the industry. Now guys, we can also link this to the price earnings multiple that we calculated. Because when we calculated the price earnings multiple, we saw that the current year and the prior year multiple was both higher than the industry average. And we said that meant that investors perceive Keen Limited to have higher potential growth or lower investment risk. So now we are saying, obviously the market believes that Keen Limited will experience higher growth than the industry. So we can link that back because the price earnings multiple tells us the same thing. Because that multiple is higher than the industry average, investors perceive Keen Limited to have a higher potential growth. So this is confirmed with Keen Limited's higher price earnings multiple. 